Hey everyone and welcome to Let's Try Avon Colony. So, Avon Colony is a city building colony management game where you have to deal with harsh realities of managing a colony on an alien planet. I haven't played it yet and it's not available on Steam just yet. There's only a public beta, a paid beta on each.io. But we are going to give it a shot. Let's have a look. There is a training from the looks of it. So let's maybe do that because, like I said, I've not played this at all yet. Which is why this is a let's try. It looks good. If it plays just as good as it looks, then it should be pretty good. Training exercise to introduce you to the colony governance system. My audio level is a little bit low. Anyway, moving the camera, right. Well, that's kind of obvious. I'm using windowed mode, so moving to the edge of the screen might be a little bit awkward. <laughs> Alright, so that's that. Rotating the camera, yep. Standard stuff, nothing unusual here. Click on a building to select it, yep. Okay, double click to center on the building. Double click on the train to scroll to a point. Or home to recenter on the colony, got it. Nanites. Nanites are self-assembling carbon metallic nanostructures used to create... So, okay, it's basically one of our resources. Alright. Sounds good to me. Build iron copper mines to extract metals. Build nanite processors to convert them to nanites. Got it. Build a mine. Alright. Let's build a mine then, shall we? Do we have to build them on the resource? The mine will cost 9 nanites. You can pick up the mine, blah, blah, blah. All right, on top of the iron deposit behind your habitat. So, which one would that be exactly? Geothermal vent. Okay. That's still the geothermal vent. Will it get highlighted once we select the mine? Yes, it will. Oh, it's right here, literally right next to the colony. <laughs> I expected it to be closer to the mountain or something like that, but all right. So that's that. Changing the game speed. All right. Up to 800%. Sounds good. Next up. Changing the game speed continued. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Next, seasons. Each day on Avon Prime is called the Sol, but it lasts much longer than a day on Old Earth. The progress bar to the left of the game speed controls shows the progress of time for the current Sol. Yep, right here. A Sol is divided into four seasons. During winter, the sun goes down. It becomes difficult to grow food and solar panels generate less electricity. Makes sense. Building tunnels. Avon's low oxygen environment requires us to hermetically seal the colony, the colony's internal atmosphere. This means that instead of roads, you will use air sealed tunnels to connect all of your structures. Alright, so here's the tunnel. And connect. Alright, sounds good. And wait for it to be completed. The game does look pretty damn good. So far, I have to say. Next, electricity indicator. 43 out of 36, which means we need more. As a result, your storage depot was automatically switched off. Okay. Is there some kind of indication that it's switched off? Let's see. Storage depot. Well, not really. 0% no power, but there's no indication on the actual map. All structures in your colony either produce or consume electricity. Electricity is automatically distributed, blah, blah, blah. Tunnels are an inexpensive way to distribute electricity, so make sure to connect all of your structures with tunnels to allow the free flow of electricity around your colony. Power shortages. If your electricity supply dips below demand, buildings will be automatically shut off until balance is restored. All right, starting with the most distant buildings from the power source. Okay, when a building loses power, the lights at the corner of its base will flash red. Oh, okay, so there is an indication on the map, got it. 
Yeah, that makes sense than some kind of icon. More immersion or whatever. As you can see, the storage depot has lost power, blah blah blah. The mine and tunnels that we built pushed our electricity demand past our colony's supply. Let's build a solar panel. Yes, let's. Okay, there are quite a lot of buildings in here. Some of them are just different tiers of the same thing from the looks of it. Alright. So, right here. Looks good so far. Next. Population indicator. Yeah, I don't want speed 8. We've added a new indicator just to the left of the nanite indicator, right here. The number on this indicator shows your colony's population. The dial and its color indicate the colony's morale. That is how happy your colonies are. As a colony grows larger, it becomes harder to keep your colonies happy. Jobs filled 100%, 7% unemployment, 1%, 100% housing capacity used. Alright, average health 100%, one unhappy colonist. Surveillance camera mode. Now let's go spy on your colonists, I mean, go meet your colonists. Fortunately for us, there are several dozen tiny surveillance cameras, blah blah blah. Yep. Oh, like this, that's interesting. We can... Okay, that's neat. We can actually click on people, alright. Interesting. We can even see happiness breakdown, very detailed happiness breakdown. I like this so far. Okay, next. Selecting colonies. Yeah, we already did that game. I'm happy to be here. Well, he's happy to be here, apparently. You should now be familiar with the basic controls. Alright, next tutorial for the core gameplay concepts. Let's go and do that then. We've created this training exercise to introduce you to some of the advanced concepts in colony management. Food indicator. The first holosim showed the purpose of several of the indicators in your colony governance system interface. Now let's take a look at the food indicator. There it is. Food variety low, food quality marginal, no food producing structures. Okay, we got 238 food in storage. I'm quite curious to see how much depth there is to this game. So far it looks interesting, I'm intrigued. Your colonists need food and water to survive. As your colony expands, you will have more and more hungry mouths to feed. It's important to keep an eye on the amount of food and water per colonist in your colony inventory. Your food indicator shows that your current level of food per colonist is less than ideal. Yep, 14.8 per colonist. Colony inventory, right here. Alright. Here's our inventory, we can't move it unfortunately. As you can see, your inventory currently contains only ration packs and some rice. You can mouse over any of these resources for more info. Okay. Let's close this dialogue and then start growing some more food. Yes, let's. Tunnels. We're going to want a place... We're going to want to place a farm in the fertile area nearby. Let's start by building a line of tunnels. Yep. Let's do that. And wait for them to complete. We can zoom in quite a lot and this is the maximum possible zoom out. I wonder how big this map is. Well, this is just the tutorial, so probably not a very good indication. Building a farm. Alright, now let's select a farm for placement and build a corn farm. Okay. So, somewhere over here is fine. Blocked. Wait, before placing the farm, select corn. Right, over here. And place it over here. Sounds good. And there's the farm. 50% productivity at this location. Okay. We can check other locations as well by hovering over them. 30%, 50%. I guess the tutorial will cover that probably. 
Overlays. Now that we've built our farm, let's take a look and see who's working there. Place the overlays button in the lower left corner and select employment overlay. All right. Employment overlay right here. Overlays. Right. Does that. The employment overlay. The employment overlay shows where our colonies live and work. The purple bars represent where the colonies live and the green bars represent work sites. Your colonists automatically attempt to distribute themselves among the available jobs as they see fit. As you can see, your 16 colonists currently work at the construction drone station, an iron mine and the farm you just placed. Yep. Worker redistribution. We have plenty of iron in inventory, so we don't need any more right now. Let's push some of our workers towards the farm by closing off unnecessary job slots on the iron mine. Select the mine. Hold shift and click the worker icons to close at least five jobs. All right, like so, and we can add them later if you want. Worker redistribution continued. As you can see, the available workers have now moved to the farm, which now has five out of five. These additional workers will make your farm significantly more productive. All right, social policies. What's this? Sieve 5? Let's adopt tradition. Then we'll have a lot of food and growth. Sieve 5 is leaking. While we're at it, let's also reduce our food consumption. We can use the rationing social policy to force them to eat less. They won't like it, <laughs> but they'll just have to deal with it. I like that. Hey, I like this game already. It's for their own good. Damn right it is. And click the checkbox to implement rationing policy. Right here. Reduces food consumption at a significant cost to morale. Okay then, let's try that again. Colony control panel. Hold on, where was that exactly? Colony control panel and policies. Right here. We got the rationing policy now. Tutorial completed. Alright, that was quick. You are ready for your first full mission. Let's do the first mission then, because that was pretty quick. And yes, it's a beta build. As you can see, the game is in active development. So, new game, and let's do the first proper mission. Okay, there are a lot of difficult levels. That's seven difficult levels. All right. The difficulty setting determines resource quantities at mission start, mission objective completion rewards, the number of resupply pod beacons available, the quantity of resources in cargo pods, the frequency and severity of environmental events such as lightning strikes and shard storms. Alright, well, let's go with normal for now, I suppose. I have no idea just how hard it's going to be. Vanar. Create a colony that can support an Earth History Center. Whatever that means. New mission available. Welcome to Vanar. Vanar is a small colony in one of the friendlier parts of Avon Prime. First, we'll need a supply of water. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Reward, 12 nanites. Okay, then. So, water pump right here. It will matter where we place it. 0 0.8 per hour. 0 0.8. Looks like 0 0.8 is the best we can do right now. Or is it? Yep, that's the best we can do at the moment. Alright, fair enough. That's fine. Speed things up a bit while we finish it. So this is sort of a continuation of the tutorial. Kinda. Which is fine by me. So, 12 nanites. New mission available. Build a farm. Right, we already know how to do that. So, let's have a look. Maybe we should go for something other than corn. Barley, broccoli, melons, rice. Corn. Okay, it does affect fertility. 5.3 per hour and zero in winter. Okay, let's check out all of these. I'm quite curious. 6.1 melons per hour. All right. 
let's get some melons, because why the heck not? 6.1. That seems to be the best. I mean, we can always build a tunnel, but there's no need to do that right now. So that's our first melon farm. Construction priority. Yep, we can change that. And we can use the bonus. Let's see. Uses fertilizer from the colonist inventory, enhancing farming efficiency by 40%. We got 50 available. Alright. New mission available. We need electricity. Well, yeah, no shit. I figured as much. Let's see, solar panel tier 2, 3, geothermal energy battery. Okay, solar panel it is then. Good enough. Carry on. Mining. Now we need a source of metals. Build a mine. The best place to put one is right on top of the big green copper deposit next to your life support module. Alright. Oh yeah, right here. That's kind of obvious. Mining. Yeah, there are quite a lot of structures in here. I wonder if you unlock more later. Probably not. The locked ones are red. Okay, mine. Winter warning. What, winter already? Winter approaches and our scanners indicate that a power failure is likely in winter unless you take steps to increase your power supply. During winter, farms will not grow crops, greenhouses will grow food at a 50% rate, all solar structures will generate 50% power. Alright. Hold on, what's the keyboard shortcut for pause? Because it's not space. And it's not pause either. Alright. Maybe we need to do it manually. Alright, fine. Yeah, this is what pause does. Let's speed things up a bit. So there's the mine. Well done. And we got our reward. With the progress of your colony, you may so what's next? What do we need to build, actually? Where's that building? Can we see our mission objectives somewhere over here? Overlay mods. Okay, new mission available. Geothermal energy. Build a geothermal generator. Alright then, yep, right here. That's kind of obvious. So we can press space and then build tunnels. Looks like that works just fine. Like this. Yep, that works just fine. And like so. And geothermal generator. And speed things up. We have a water shortage. That's probably going to be next. Oh, that's winter right now. That's an interesting effect. Oh, you can pause just with one. I thought one is basically speed one, not a pause. Okay. Fair enough. There. So, what's next? Let's have a look. Apartment. We're going to need some more living space for our colonies. Let's build a small apartment building. Okay, then. Does it matter if it's close or far away? Probably not. Does placement matter at all? Not too much from the looks of it. So here will be fine. Hour 15 out of 56 in the season, okay. Making nanites. The next step towards creating a self-sustaining colony is to begin manufacturing your own nanites. A nanite processor will synthesize new nanites from any iron or copper that you mine. You may place this structure anywhere, it does not need to be placed on a metal deposit. Okay then. So, laser mine. Nanite processor. 
We can build it right next to the mine because we can. Sounds good to me. And there it is. A lot of these buildings look kind of same-ish, especially from far away. Storage. We could use more storage capacity. Yep. So, storage depot. Mini storage depot. At least that's what the game wants from us. Next to the nanite processor. Question is, does distance actually matter? Or do things magically teleport? I guess we'll find out at some point. So just how big is this map? Well, it's reasonably big, but nothing amazing. All right, reward available. We can choose immigrants, rice or nanites. Okay. Let's maybe choose immigrants. We got 16 colonies. So plus 5 is actually quite a lot. Alright, sounds good. That's 21. And what's next? Immigration. Now your colony needs more inhabitants. Place an immigration center to allow some of the colonies in the orbiting colony ship to migrate to your colony. Alright, so that's how we get new colonies. Wow, okay, that's big. Right. Let's just build a tunnel or something. Like so. And then we can press space and connect it like that. That's the largest structure so far, other than the geothermal generator. There. Okay. Growing the colony. We'd like to see this colony grow. If you can support 50 colonists, we will reward you with nanites and food. To do this, make sure your immigration center has sufficient power and staffing levels and that you have sufficient housing to accommodate new immigrants. Then you will need to wait for enough people to arrive for your population to reach 50, okay? So that's our goal, reach 50 population. Build a habitat. Alright, let's build a habitat then. Required 16 power supports 36 colonists. Okay, that's pretty big. Well, that's perfect. Just enough space. So, food. Plus 1.2. Water. Well, seems fine to me right now, but we are probably going to need more food at our current rate. Let's see if there's going to be another mission after the habitat before we start anything. Air quality, 94%. I guess that's not a factor right now, but it will be in the future. Average happiness. So there's the habitat. Any other objectives or just get 50 population? Just get 50 population, I think. Nope, there's a new one. Oxygen, yeah, I was just looking at that. We're quickly getting to the point where air inside our hermetically sealed colony will turn foul if you were not careful. The geothermal generator in particular will pollute the air fairly quickly. Place an intake fan to help filter the external atmosphere and bring oxygen to your colony. It's a good idea to place this as close to your geothermal generator as you can, alright? Makes sense. So, intake fan. We can place it right here. Right next to the generator. So there it is. Any more objectives? Yep. Trade. The next step is to build a trade hub to allow you to exchange resources with the orbiting colony ship. Alright. Trade hub. Let's see. Maybe somewhere on the side. Not that it matters that much. I'm actually not sure just yet how much the layout will matter. We'll find out in the future probably. So let's build it slightly further away. Because we can, basically. There we go. That's going to be the trade hub. And maybe some more living space. Another apartment or two. Habitat tier 2. We can place one right here. Sounds good. And probably a little bit of extra food. 
Let's see, farming structures, greenhouse. Okay, what if we build a greenhouse? Let's see. Broccoli, corn. Let's have a look. Here it seems fine. Anything else? Barley. Broccoli. Okay. Looks like corn will be the best. Somewhere over here. No powered construction drones in range. Yeah, fine. We'll just place it over here for now. And what about water? Won't that be a problem? A new water pump, perhaps? Sounds like we'll need that. Okay, now placement definitely matters. So over here, with abundant water, and connect it. This might not be necessary, but we'll do it anyway. Plus 15.9, plus 0. Plus 0 0.8 food. Well, let's wait for everything to finish. So what about that employment overlay? Where was it exactly? We got crime overlay. Let's just check all the overlays. Resource overlay. Housing. Happiness. Here's employment. Immigration center. 50% efficiency. Electricity. Structures. Drones. Crops. Water. Commute. Overlay. Okay, so placement will matter for sure. And crime. Alright, let's check new missions then, shall we? What's this? Trade. Right, I guess these missions will cover that. We could probably use a little more electricity. Like most buildings, the geothermal generator will run more efficiently if you upgrade it. Okay, so upgrade. Select the generator. And we can upgrade it right here. Upgrade to tier 2, plus 60 max power. Alright. Exporting melons. Great work. Now that you have 100 melons in your inventory, use the trade hub to export them to us. Simply open the trade button, third lower, yep, that's the one I was looking at just now, and select the appropriate contract. This may take some time, so you'll need to be patient. Also, it's probably a good idea to set melons as non-consumable in your inventory pane. Alright? So that none of your colonists eat them before export. But we don't need enough food, I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, we got almost 600 right now. Yeah, we will be low on food if we disable that. I'm not so convinced that's such a great idea. But if this guy says so... Alright, let's export 100. It's not required to... exclude them. So let's just export. Export 100 and import 120 beer. Okay, so you can't select what you're going to import. You just need to pick which contract you want. Okay. Carry on then. Looks like that won't take too long. We still need 50 population, but we're getting there. 58% complete. We got 29 at the moment. Here's the morale panel. They need entertainment. How unreasonable. More drones. Let's upgrade our construction drone hub too. This will give us a second drone which will help us build things faster. Many structures support multiple upgrade tiers. And the increased benefits of the higher tiers are usually worth the cost. Alright. So where's the construction hub exactly? Right here. There it is. So we can control this. Well, not sure if I really want to right now. I'm just checking. So upgrade. Like so. And we'll use maximum speed for a moment. There it is. Still exporting the melons and we still need a little bit of extra population. Immigration vessel docked. Extending the colony. There's a cargo pod not far outside of your colony. On the far side of the largest lake nearby. And it's full of valuable food and nanites. Unfortunately, it's out of range of your construction drones. Place a second construction drone hub in that area. The white circle shown when you drag it around shows the drone range. Place it such that the cargo pod is inside the circle as well as the nearest 
uncovered geothermal vent outside of your colony and connect your colony with tunnels, alright? Sounds good. So there it is. That's the cargo pod. And the geothermal vent is right here. I assume that's the one they were talking about. So, drone. Drone construction hub, tier 1. Oh, that's huge, actually. Alright. So, right here. I mean, I guess it can be a little bit closer. But just to maximize the efficiency, I suppose. And we need the tunnels, obviously. Like so. Hold on, that's a farm. Can we remove that? Let's see. Actually, how do we cancel construction? Can we cancel construction? I'm sure we can somewhere. Maybe pause the game for a moment. Let's see. Right, tunnel. But how do we cancel construction? Recycle. I guess we can do that. It will recover one nanite. Imploding does not require drones, but will not... Oh, right. Okay, we'll do that. Cancel. There, that's better. Much, much better. New mission available. Exporting rice. I don't think we have any rice, do we? I don't think so, no. Actually, I guess we do. Alright, fine. And cargo pods. Now that you've built your second drone construction hub, select the cargo pod and press the pickup button. Alright. Where was it exactly? Right here. No drones in range. We've not finished it just yet, did we? Yeah, we've not finished the tunnel yet. So let's maybe wait for that. There it is. So now it should work. Now? Do we need to wait for a drone or something like that? Let's see, maybe. Oh, there it is. So what did we get? Not quite sure. Cargo pod acquired 150 corn, 90 rice and 60 nanites. Alright, sounds good. Objective completed, immigration vessel docked. Okay, looking good. Your colony could storage. Yep, storage depot. Okay, then. Can we build a bigger one? Oh yeah, that is the bigger one. Let's just build it somewhere around here. Alright. Looks good. We got 165 nanites. Can we upgrade the nanite processor? I guess we can. Let's maybe do that. That sounds useful. Seeing how nanites are required for basically everything. Objective completed. Export rice. Right. Let's maybe do that. Or are we still doing it? Yes, we are still doing it. I've Batteries. Let's build like an energy battery to store some of your colony's spare electricity. An energy battery can increase the efficiency of up to eight adjacent power generating buildings, so try to place it next to your solar panels or your geothermal generator. All right, let's place it next to the geothermal generator then. Batteries, right here. So we can place one behind it. Or even two. All right. I think we need more apartments, possibly. Let's build a smaller one right here. Not enough space for anything bigger. Expanding. High Command would like you to expand your colony. Please create three additional structures of any type, including tunnels. Well, that's easy. It's up to you to determine what types of structures your colony needs the most. Let's see. We seem to be fine on the most things. So... Habitat, maybe food. Seeing how we can always sell food, that seems like a good idea. Let's see, food. Maybe we can build the greenhouse. Tier 2 greenhouse. 
Let's see, rice. What do we not have yet? Broccoli, we do not have that. It won't be as efficient from the looks of it. But we can place one over here. That seems reasonable. Reward available. Immigrants, potash and nanites. We still need 50 population. Let's get immigrants. That will finish our 50 population goal faster. What's this? Zorium deposit. Okay. And iron deposit. Let's build a mine then. There was also a deposit over here. Yep, we can do that. They are limited actually. Only 2000. Not that much. So mining structures. Alright, looks good. And speed things up. Farm upgrades. It would be a good idea to upgrade your farm to tier 2. Yes, I figured as much. Upgrade. Okay, maybe we should also upgrade the construction drone hub. Can we upgrade it to tier 3? Yeah, we can. There we go, tier 3. Research center. The next step in your colony's growth is to construct a research center. This will allow you to research a broad array of foods, beverages and chemicals. Alright, I like research. Requires 24 power. Alright, we do need more power in that case. Maybe we can upgrade the generators. Is there an easy way to find these things? Like, can we highlight all the power generating structures, for example, with overlay maybe? Electricity. Well, that's the geothermal generator. Let's build a solar panel maybe. Tier 3 with some batteries somewhere on the side. Somewhere over here. That seems reasonable. Alright. That will do. So get the power and some batteries maybe. Let's have a look. Energy battery, yep. Just one will do for now. Alright. So research center, do we have enough now? Wow, that's huge, holy crap. Alright, I mean, I guess we have a lot of space. So this is acceptable. But maybe closer... Huh. Yeah, this is where it will receive workers from. So placement does matter quite a bit. From the looks of it. There was like commute overlay. Yeah, right here. Commute penalty, 14.4. Shows the difficulty of commuting around each part of the colony. Okay, so that means it's very hard to commute here. We should just build some apartments in that part, I guess. Okay, so let's do that. Habitat tier 1. That works. Happiness seems fine, but not over here. Yeah, 60% happiness. We can check why. Probably because of the commute difficulty. Yep. Minus 42 morale because of that. Alright. So, let's finish that research center, shall we? There it is. I have a request for you. Growing the colony. 100. Your colony has reached a population of 50. Your next objective is to reach 100 colonists. Take your time and keep your citizens safe, happy and healthy. Alright, but I think this is a good moment to make a cut. So I'm going to continue in the next part. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you'd like to see more and if you enjoyed the first episode. I'll see you next time.